Question number 14 from the AP Calc AB Blue Book Test Preview. This is a calculator question, although the calculator isn't all that helpful here. It says we've got a twice differentiable function, values of f prime. So that would be the derivative of f. As selected values of x are in the table above. Which of the following statements must be true? Now what catches my eye right away about these answer options is the similarity between C and D. And if you think about what they're saying, there exists a C between negative 1 and 5 such that a certain thing has to happen. Those are things that we would say in the conclusion of either the intermediate value theorem or the mean value theorem. So I'm, I'm kind of suspecting that that's probably the direction that we're going to have to take this. What I did is I did plot these points, connected the endpoints. I'm finding the average rate of change. Now this is the average rate of change of F prime on the interval from negative one to five. So I'm taking the F prime value at five, subtracting the F prime value at negative one. I'm then dividing by the corresponding difference in X's. I do get negative three halves. Well, that's where that number that's in option C and option D comes from. I'm allowed to apply the intermediate value theorem if I'm continuous. Because I'm twice differentiable, I know that F prime is continuous, right? My first derivative is always going to exist. So I know that my F prime values, keep in mind, this is a graph of F prime. I didn't label it, but it is a graph of F prime. I know that my F prime values go through every value from 11 down to 2, but I don't know that they necessarily dip to negative 3 halves. Could they? Yeah, this graph could, you know, come through this point, quickly go down, and then come back up. Uh, but I don't think that C has to necessarily be true. But think about D. The rate of change of F prime would be F double prime. The average rate of change of F prime on this interval is negative 3 halves. Because F is twice differentiable, f prime is both continuous and differentiable. The mean value theorem is going to guarantee that the instantaneous rate of change of f prime, which is f double prime, has to equal this average rate of change at least once on that interval. We are going with option D. I'd, I'd be concerned that we might choose option C just because we're used to applying the mean value theorem going from f to f prime. In this case, we're going from f prime to f double prime, which is why our conclusion is d and not c. We're dealing with f prime values here. We are not dealing with function values.